Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 8B. This is the second of two tutorials in the series focusing on accounting for convertible bonds. This particular tutorial focuses on accounting for convertible bonds with incentives. This tutorial has three main learning objectives. The first is to review accounting for convertible bonds with and without incentives or sweeteners using the residual method that's applicable under both IFRS and ASPE. Second, to prepare the journal entries from the perspective of the bond issuer as it relates to the issue, early retirement, early conversion, and then conversion at maturity. And finally, as we've done with many tutorials, to review present value concepts. This tutorial focuses on the Madison Corp B example. We'll proceed with requirement one, which is to prepare all the required journal entries as shown below using the residual method. So again, the issue of the bonds on January 2nd, 2020, the early retirement on June 30th, 2022, and the final conversion on December 31st, 2024. Let's proceed with requirement 1A here, and that's to show a bond amortization table with the market value based on no conversion feature. No surprise that the result is the same as tutorial A, where we calculated the present value to be based on 10N, 3.5 interest, 12,500 payment, and 500,000 future value. And this down here just reiterates what we have. So the company has a 500,000 five year, 5% convertible bond sold at 102. What's different here is that each bond in this case can be converted to 50 common shares, which are trading at $25. And the bonds without the conversion feature trade at 7%. And that 7% of course is what give us our 3.5% interest rate for discounting. And then we could show, as we saw in tutorial 8a, the market value of the bonds with the conversion feature, again calculated the same way. Uh, we're told that the bonds are sold at 102, so this times 500,000 gives us 510,000. And then what we have to do is determine that interest rate based on an effective rate calculation as shown below down here. So that 2.27 or 2.2714 is how we got to that number and how it works out nicely in our amortization table. So the first thing to do here is record the issue of the bonds on January 1st, 2020 using the residual approach. And guess what? It's exactly the same as tutorial A. No changes here. Debit cash for 510,000, credit the bond payable for 458,417, which is the present value without the conversion option, and then a credit to the contributed surplus conversion option account for the residual of 51,583. Then for part B, we have to deal with the early retirement of the bonds on June 30, 2022, and that's based on what happens here is that the company decides to retire, right, instead of convert. The tutorial 8A was a conversion. This is an early retirement. So once we retire 50% of the bonds early, offering the bondholders 300000 in cash. And that 300000 represents the fair value of the bonds at the time of the retirement plus a sweetener. And the fair value of the debt portion of the payout for the convertible bonds is $240,000. So what does that mean for us? It means that the first part here, is as we've done before to update the interest on the convertible bonds so we're going to debit interest expense for 16,568 based on the calculation of the present value of the bonds after the previous payment so if you look at the amortization table prior to the retirement the value of the bonds is 473,357 at three and a half percent. The cash is 12,500. And so the credit to the bond payable for the amortization is 4,068. But what's new is this piece down here. What happens is the bond payable We'll still get a debit of 238,712. We've calculated this a number of times. So the carrying value with five periods remaining times 50%, no problem. The second piece, the debit to the contributed surplus for the conversion option gets the 50% of the balance of the residual when it was originally set up. Then we have a loss on early redemption. Now that loss is calculated as the difference between the carrying value of the bonds and the $240,000 fair value of the bonds. So that's 1,288. Then what we have is a debit to retained earnings for the options retired that we could do in one of two ways. If we know that the cash is going to get a $300,000 credit, 
then 34,208 is just simply the plug or the calculated amount to make the debits equal credits. But at the same time, we can actually prove that calculation as the difference between the payment and the fair value. So the $300,000 payment minus the $240,000 fair value, and that's subtracted from the conversion option. So 25,792 minus the difference between the 300,000 cash that's paid and the $240,000 fair value is $34,208. Okay, our next requirement is the final bond conversion at December 31st, 2024. What we have to do is show the amortization schedule for the bonds without the conversion feature. We got the remaining 238,712, the 50% that was not converted. This is exactly the same as we saw uh, under tutorial 8A. Same thing we have to do here is update the interest on the bond using the value just prior to the conversion. 247,585 times 3.5% is 86.65, which is the same as the interest. Cash is 62.50 because we have half of the original $12,500 payment. And then the balance, which is the net credit to the bond payable of 24.50, no problem. So continuing on, so again, this is the same as tutorial A. We did the interest payment update, and now all we have to do is record the conversion of the remaining 50% of the bonds. And this also is exactly the same as in tutorial A. So if you decided not to view tutorial A, you want to go back and view that, but we'll summarize it very briefly here. We know that at maturity, the value of the bonds is 250,000, so that has to come out. So debit bonds payable 250,000. The contributed surplus for the bond conversion must also be debited for the remaining 25,792. And then the common shares will get credited for the sum of 275,792, which is the 250 plus the 25,792. And if we want to know how many shares were issued at that time, that's divided by $28, which is the market price, gives us 9,850 common shares issued, and we're done. Now we can wrap up with the second requirement, which is now instead of retiring 50% of the bonds early, the company wants to initiate a conversion of 50% of the bonds by paying a $25,000 sweetener. So this is a modification of instead of retiring, they're going to convert, they're going to pay a $25,000 sweetener or incentive. And again, using the residual method, we'll prepare the journal entry for June 30th, 2022. So this is not the whole thing over again. This is just the piece of it. To record that early conversion with the sweetener, the first part is still to update the interest. I'm not going to go over that again. It's exactly the same as tutorial 8a and the first requirement of this tutorial, but the piece that's new has to do with the dark shaded blue area. What we have is a debit to bond payable for the same 238.712, no problem. A debit to the conversion option contributed surplus for the other 50% of the residual, no problem. We still have a loss on early redemption of the difference between the carrying value and the fair value. So that's the same. So each of these are the same. But the difference here lies in the retained earnings for the options retired. And that's determined to be the difference between the $25,000 sweetener and the $1,288 loss on redemption. Okay. In the previous requirement, the company paid $300,000, which included a sweetener. But here, the cash is only $25,000. Therefore, we have to determine that basically the combined values of the loss and the retained earnings must equal the amount of the sweetener. The loss plus the retained earnings must equal $25,000. And then we can credit the common share account for the amount uh, to balance, 264.504, when the market price is $25, gives us 10,580 shares. Okay, so let's wrap up with some points to remember. These first two are just a review from the um, previous tutorial. And prior to any conversion, always make sure that the carrying value of the bonds is updated through an interest uh, adjustment using the effective rate. In cases of early retirement, sometimes we refer to that as redemption or a conversion. A gain or loss may be calculated based on the difference between the carrying value and the fair value. In this case, we had a loss. And any remaining difference between the adjustment to contributed surplus for the conversion options and the difference between the cash paid to retire and the sweetener and the fair value is allocated to a retained earnings options retired or contributed surplus 
options retired account. So it really just depends on whether you have a net debit or credit. This concludes tutorial 8b. If you need to review convertible bonds without incentives, then go back and look at tutorial 8a.